All right, guys, so this is the first video in the neurology section. I thought we'd start with the adult uh, adult brain tumors. Um, and so this is something that when I taught in class, I used a little, little bit of an animation or, or slide, I should say. So uh, just kind of work through them. I think the, the first one or two questions is, are, are pretty good. Um, but anyways, try those, and um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you like the video. All right, guys, so question number one reads, a 68-year-old man presents to his primary care's office secondary to worsening headaches and weakness. His symptoms began approximately three months ago and has noticed difficulty with lifting heavy objects and has associated nausea and vomiting and left-sided weakness. <clears throat> uh, the MRI of the head is shown below. Which of the following is the most associated with the patient's condition? And is it A, derived from Rathke's pouch? Is it B, uh, S1... S100 positive? Is it C, associated with somoma bodies? Is it D, usually found at the cerebellopontine angle? Or is it E, GFAP positive? So at the end of this video, I think you'll be able to run through these really, really fast. But you can obviously tell they're talking about, when you look at this, they're talking about tumors and adult tumors. And so this video is going to focus on those. So let's just take a, take a step back and let's review real quick, and then I'll show you how we can memorize these things um, in a in a relatively reasonable way, so we got to be able to let me just think, think about this. Uh, so if we were to draw the brain, you know, kind of this way, and it goes down, um, and this is the frontal lobe on this side. So and then here's the cerebellum. So you have that this line, okay? You have this line, and above the line they call it supratentorial. And below it, you have the infra tentorial or tentorium. All right. So just think about this. For the most part, this 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 rule holds, but there are exceptions. So don't don't hold too firm to it. But above it, you're thinking adult tumors. Below it, uh, you're thinking children. And that'll be a different video when we talk about the children tumors. Okay. So for the adult, your big ones are going to be. Um, you have the uh, glioblastoma. Okay. Glioblastoma, this is going to be the, the most common one, so uh, you got to know that one, okay? Most commonly attested one, most common adult. Um, it's in the uh, cerebral hemispheres. It can cross, can cross midline, okay? Associated with necrosis and GFAP. Positive, okay. Glioblastoma, the most common. It's in this. It's in the cerebral hemispheres. Can cross midline. Associated necrosis. GFAP positive. The next one we have is a meningioma, okay. And for now, just kind of listen to me as I go through these, and, and it'll all make sense here in just a second. You find this one in the convexities. It's resectable, okay. Kind of good prognosis. You know, glioblastoma, not so good prognosis for the most part. Meningioma. Uh, looks like it's resectable, good prognosis. Associated with somoma bodies, benign, okay? Associated with, uh, l I guess say, laminated calcifications, okay? Kind of like the somoma bodies. Um, and they're like rings on a tree. Rings on a tree. All right? The next one you have is a schwannoma. Okay, schwannoma. The big thing about that, S100, S100 positive. This one is usually found at uh, cerebellopontine angle. Okay. And most of them, most of the time, associated, 6%, associated with uh, cranial nerves, okay? Mostly cranial nerve 8. Uh, so just remember that, okay? Don't worry about the percent. Don't worry about that. The other one is going to be a, and this is still, a ki uh, uh, still an adult, is the oligodendroglioma, okay? This one's rare, slow-growing. Um, you get this, as they say, a fried egg appearance. And, you're not, and again, don't write these down. We'll, we'll get them in a second, which means it has round nuclei with clear 
cytoplasm, mostly frontal lobe. Okay? And then the last one, the last adult one that we're really going to focus in on is going to be the pituitary adenoma. Pituitary adenoma. Most common is the prolactinoma. Okay? The signs and symptoms of that is going to be uh, amenorrhea, amenorrhea, hypo, hypogonadism, uh, galactorrhea. Okay, you get the bitemporal hemianopsia. Okay, and it's derived from. Rathke's pouch. Now, all this stuff is in your first aid book. You know, it's, it's not like I'm making this stuff up or, you know, dreaming this stuff up myself. So, those are your big adult tumors: the glioblastoma, meningioma, schwannoma, oligodendroglioma, and the pituitary adenoma. Um, and just for kind of the the most common CNS tumor in immunized, Im, immunocompromised people, it's going to be what? It's going to be the CNS lymphoma. Okay, that's just kind of an extra piece there. CNS lymphoma, most common immunocompromised. All right, so now that we have that, here's, so here's how you're going to memorize this. So on the screen now, you see that first picture, okay? You see the first picture, it's a, obviously you see the brain, and then it's just a glioblastoma. And if you see the butterfly, why? Because the glioblastoma is a butterfly lesion. What, is the, what do those arrows represent in the middle of the butterfly? That it crosses the midline. So it's a butterfly lesion, can cross midline. The thing on the bottom right of that butterfly represents the necrosis, right? It can be, it's, it's associated with necrosis. And then of course the left bottom is associated with GFAP positive, which is the astrocyte marker. So again, the glioblastoma, most common in adults, butterfly lesion, uh, can cross the midline associated with necrosis and GFAP positive. And so we're going to put it right there. I'll see on this slide, we're going to put it right there because it's in the cerebral hemispheres. And again, it's the butterfly crosses midline, GFAP positive, necrosis. That's glioblastoma. The next one here is meningioma. Now, why is it the blue circles in the M in the middle? The M in the middle stands for meningioma. The blue circles represent what? It's associated with somoma bodies. Okay, they're associated with laminated calcification. They're like rings on a tree. So when you think of meningioma, you're thinking like this looks like a bullseye, right? But associated with somoma bodies, rings on a tree, benign. Now, where do we say this was? It's in the convexity. So on the next slide, what is it? Where do we put this? We put it right there on the outside, you know, because it's more in the convexities. So again, right there you have the glioblastoma, butterfly lesion, crosses midline associated with necrosis, GFAP positive. You have the meningioma associated with somoma bodies. It looks like rings on a tree. So in the convexities, it's resectable, okay? Now, going to the next one, it just says schwannoma, right? The schwannoma, it's S100 positive. That's why the S is red there, okay? Schwannoma, so the next slide, where do we put it? We put, this is the one that kind of is the exception to the rule for adults. Remember, we said the adults should be in the supratentorial and, uh, but this one kind of is associated with the schwannoma, S100 positive, usually found at the cere cerebellopontine angle, okay? Cerebellopontine angle, that's why it's down there. Associated cranial nerve eight, S100, S100 positive, you think schwannoma, all right? So there's three of them on that screen. Glioblastoma, crosses midline, necrosis, associated with GFAP positive. Then we have the meningioma, uh, can, it's in the convexities, somoma bodies, laminated calcifications. And we have the schwannoma, uh, S100 positive. Now, we got this one, it's the oligodendroglioma. It says dendrocyte, but it's the oligodendroglioma. Why is it looking like that? This is rare, okay? It's slow growing, it's the fried egg appearance. Why? Because it has a round nuclei and a clear cytoplasm. It's the best I could do on this, right? Oligodendroglioma, rare, uh, slow growing, um, has a round nucleus with clear cytoplasm. Where was it mostly found? It's mostly found in the frontal lobe, okay? Frontal lobe. So again, now we have four things. 
glioblastoma, crosses midline, necrosis, GFAT positive, meningioma, associated with somoma bodies in the convexities, schwannoma, the it's S100 positive in the cerebellopontine angle, oligodendroglioma, um, it's rare, slow growing, fried egg appearance, round nuclei um, with clear cytoplasm, mostly in the frontal lobe. And now the last slide, it's the last one here, it's called the prolactinoma. You can tell you can pretty much find anything on the internet here. So it's derived from, why is it a kangaroo? Because the prolactinoma, and you can tell, remember you have enlarged uh, chest there, the prolactinoma derived from Ratke's pouch. The kangaroo has a pouch, right? So that's how you're gonna remember it's the uh, prolactinoma. It's, the, well, it's, a, it's a pituitary adenoma, which is the most common is a prolactinoma, associated with amenorrhea, galactorrhea, and this is where you have the bitemporal heminopsia, right? Where you can kind of see it coming from, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the peripheral vision is really messed up. Uh, but anyways, uh, there you go. That's a pituitary adenoma derived from Rathke's pouch. So here on the last slide, there's all the adult tumors that you got to know. Now you should know these by now, right? It's the glioblastoma, most common adult one, crosses midline up in the uh, it's in the cerebrum. Uh, ne so it's with necrosis and GFAT positive. We have the uh, meningioma, right? It's in the con it's in the convexities, uh, associated with somoma bodies, resectable. We have the schwannoma, it's in the cerebellopontine angle, S100 positive. We have the oligodendroglioma, associated in the, in the frontal cortex, round nuclei, clear cytoplasm, and then the last one's the prolactinoma, right, on the pituitary. Uh, the most common is a, I'm sorry, it's a pituitary adenoma. The most common is a prolactinoma, um, and it's derived from Rathke's pouch. All right, so now back to the question. The 68-year-old man, we know this one, you know, if we look at the picture, we know that it's a, it's a tumor. The guy, it's, it's an adult, so we're in the ballpark here. And then if it's an adult, we just run through those tumors. And then we see that it pushes. You see how this thing pushes the midline? how it pushes that. So we know what, what kind of tumor is this? Um, and it's pretty, obviously if it's pretty bad, but just based on this, we know that this is a glioblastoma. Now we go back to that picture, right? We, we have that picture in our head. Remember it was the um, butterfly and it crossed, it crossed midline. That's why we had the arrows associated with necrosis on the right. And then we had this other stuff on the left. Was it A? So is glioblastoma, is it A, derived from Rasky's pouch? And you're like, no, that's a pituitary adenoma, okay? S100 positive? No, that's a schwannoma. We know that. Associated with somoma bodies? Um, no, we know that's going to be a meningioma. Usually found at the cerebellopontine angle? Nope, we know that one's also a schwannoma characteristic. Is it GFAP positive? Yes. Okay, glioblastoma. Uh, butterfly, it's a butterfly lesion. Uh, looks like a, can look like a butterfly lesion, even though this one doesn't really look at it like that. Um, associated necrosis, cro can, may cross midline, GFAP positive, okay? Next one here. Says, a 39-year-old female presents to her primary care physician after her partner reports drastic changes in personality over the past several months. Intracranial mass MRI is discovered and biopsy reveals the following. Um, the patient most likely suffers from, and it's, we have all these tumors down uh, through here. First of all, it's 39, so we're nowhere in the adult tumor section, okay? And we're nice enough to put these here. So, but when you look at the picture, do you see anything, and I know it's kind of hard, but black and white, but do you see anything that might be attributable? You know, it doesn't tell us what part of the brain, but we do have a clue about what part of the brain this is, okay? Drastic um, personality changes, and a lot of times that can happen in the uh, frontal lobe, okay? But even a better clue for this one is gonna be what? If you notice here, there's all these, it looks like there's all these circles, you know, these concentric calcifications, some MoMA bodies, right? And if you see, they're all over the place. So which one is this? Which one did we say is associated in the, in the convexities? Um, could be in the, the frontal lobe, and could be in the frontal lobe, but just more associated with the, with the convexities. Um, but the big clue is somoma bodies, concentric calcifications. This one, of course, is going to be the meningioma. Okay, you know what do we say? 
schwannoma, you're looking for S100 positive, cerebellopontine angle, associated cranial, uh, cranial nerve uh, 8, glioblastoma, we talked about that one, very bad, uh, can cross midline, necrosis, GFAP positive, oligodendroglioma, you're looking for that fried egg appearance around nuclei, clear cytoplasm, slow growing, rare, prolactinoma, we just talked about, um, has the uh, you know, it's, it's actually a pituitary adenoma, most common is prolactinoma, associated with Rathke's pouch, or derived from. Um, and then, a, obviously, I have glioblaster on there, on there twice. So the correct answer on this one's gonna be meningioma. This one, 28-year-old female is being evaluated for a regular menstrual cycle during the primary care visit. She also inquires about eye examination because she has been having difficulty with driving. She states that she was, almost was involved in a motor vehicle accident on more than one occasion recently when she could not see cars coming in from the sides. The patient most likely suffers from which of the following? Uh, which of the following? So she's having trouble with her peripheral vision, uh, irregular menstrual cycle, she's 28. You know it's a tumor, which tumor is this gonna be? Well, most likely it's gonna be the prolactinoma, pituitary adenoma, um, just based on the symptoms alone. This is an easy question. Now that peripheral vision, if you go back to the neurology um, and hopefully I can draw this properly. If you look, remember in neurology how in the, uh, let me see, it goes like that. Of course I butchered it, I butchered it. Um, you know, we, if you, I know, I should have done it like this. Should be on the outside. So anyways, if you, oh, I totally butchered that. I don't know why I should have practiced this one. If I have it like that, the, because it's the peripheral vision, that's right. Okay. All right, so let me get this. Let me just make sure I get, get this right. This is how we're, um, here's the back of the eye on both these. And the outer one is going to go like this. And then the inner one should cross over, right? So if you have a pituitary adenoma on this guy, it's going to knock this guy out. So what's going to happen? It's the vision on the back of the eye that goes outward that's impaired, right? Because the pituitary, ad, pituitary adenoma knocks that guy out. So if you're looking through, you know, eyeglasses or binoculars, it's the outside that's impaired. Um, so that's why the pituitary adenoma would knock out the, the outside, the vision coming out that way. And my fault, I should have practiced that and done a better job on the front end. But the correct answer on this one is gonna be uh, prolactinoma. And then the last one here says a 42-year-old male has intracranial mass re removed. The mass consisted of cell forms of myelin sheets wrapping in plasma membrane concentrically around the inner axon. Okay. The cell shows S100 immunoreactivity. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in the patient? So anytime you see S100 and you have to give a choice of, of tumors, you're going to jump all over, all over schwannoma. So again, if we were just to, to review these, there's only there's you know five main ones here for the adult tumors, and we'll cover the, the child later. Glio, meningioma, schwannoma, oligodendroglioma, and pituitary adenoma. If someone's immunocompromised, think lymphoma. Okay? Hope this was helpful, guys. Mm -hmm.